got to fix the brightness, the camera brightness. Got to put the camera on the tripod. There's so much stuff to do when you're live streaming. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Theater Thursday. That's right. We're going to talk about what's coming to theaters this weekend, March 24th, 25th, 2023, and what's coming to your home theater. That's right. That's the theater at your house. So, aka, that's a good way to say what's coming to, you know, streaming this weekend. We're going to talk all about that and more. But first, I got to do one thing. I'll be right back. wasn't gone too long. Here I am. Yeah, so it's a big, well, big-ish weekend for movies. There's a lot of movies that are already in theaters. The big box office talk for this weekend is a little sequel to a little film where a man gets mad because his dog gets taken. Remember in the simple days when we had uh, just a plot where John Wick wanted revenge because his dog was taken? I burped, I'm sorry. Now it's Crazy convoluted, but we have John Wick Chapter 4. Uh, how many John Wicks do you think we're going to get? Right off the bat, like, that's, that's a good question to ask. How many John Wicks do you think there'll be? Do you think there'll be eight? Do you think there'll be ten John Wicks? I, I honestly think Keanu would do a John Wick film a year until he just couldn't do literally anything anymore. I really do think that Keanu Reeves would make, like, 25 John Wick films. And, you know, for the most part, they would probably be pretty good. I've heard that this one, though, John Wick Chapter 4, eh, might be uh, getting a bit stale for some people, but I don't know. So that's that's the big movie that's coming out this weekend, is Chapter 4 in the John Wick saga. Um, I heard that the last third of the movie is like some of the coolest action scenes, period. If you watch some of the um, internet reviews, like, you know, Grace Randolph, Beyond the Trailer, if you, if you uh, watch... You know, Jeremy Johns, people like that, they tend to agree that the third act, when John Wick gets to Paris, it's not a spoiler, I mean, it's in the trailer, um, that's when the movie really fires on all cylinders. I have not seen the movie yet. Have you guys? Let me know in the comments below whether you're watching here live or after the live stream ends and it's got a replay. Either way, let me know what you thought of John Wick Chapter 4. I think Nerdy Dustin might even be watching it this weekend and you might actually see a review of John Wick Chapter 4 from the man, the myth, the legend, Nerdy Dustin himself. And how did you guys like his video earlier? That's the first in his uh, new series where, you know, he's got to defend that film, right? He's got to defend that movie. He pulls random movies out of a bucket, suggestions given to him by you guys, the beautiful audience here at Geek Pulse. And he takes, pulls one at random, and then uh, tries to defend it. He had to defend... Batman and Robin. He had to defend Superman 4. He had to defend Herbie Fully Loaded or Reloaded or whatever. Um, that's the Lizzie, Lindsay Lohan remake. He had to defend, defend all that film, all those films and more. Check out that video if you've not. I'm going to link it at the end of this uh, live stream video so you can check it out. But what are you guys up to? How you doing? It's almost Friday. For those of you that work a 9 to 5 job Monday through Friday, it almost is Friday, and uh, I, for one, am very happy that uh, it's almost Friday. Woo! Then the weekend comes. I've got a really fun adventure planned with Mary. Uh, her and I are going to do something really cool. We're going to flip a coin, and then uh, if it lands on heads, we're just going to travel 100 miles north from where we're at. If it lands on tails, we're going to travel like 100 miles southwest, south, northwest, southwest, and then... We're just going to see what cool things we see along the way. And when we get to the location, we'll just find a cool hotel, maybe some like cool vintage thrift shops to go to. Uh, we're looking to find like uh, a skating rink 
because Mary got some really awesome new skates and she wants to be a, a skating savant and she might be. We don't know until we get to, to the skating rink. Um, she's also looking for a really cool vintage cookie jar. So, and I'm always looking for cool stuff to add to my collection. So you never know what you're going to find when you do a random road trip. Also, if you've not checked it out, this is my recommendation for the live stream. Go online to atlasobscura.com. You can also get the, uh, the printed copy, not a sponsor. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'm just looking, I'm just reading comments. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so yeah, go to atlasobscura.com, type in the city you're living in or somewhere close and see what kind of cool stuff pops up. Um, I'm fairly certain you'll see a lot of really cool things. So check it out. Adventure awaits. You know, life is an adventure and you might as well just get on the road. Man, I'm talking in bumper sticker slang tonight. I got to slow down. I have too much uh, zero sugar cheer wine. For those in the South, that might be some sort of cardinal sin. For those in the North, you're like, what is cheer wine? And to you, I say, why? Why do you not know what cheer wine is? Come on, people from the North. It's delicious. I am trying to cut out the sugars and carbs in my life, so that's why it is diet. And it tastes pretty much just like regular cheer wine. Again, not a sponsor, but boy, there's no Southern, there's no greater Southern thing other than being sponsored by Skoll that uh, would be satisfactory as having a sponsorship from Cheer Wine, the drink of NASCAR. It's not the drink of NASCAR. I'm just saying that. So, uh, yeah. So John Wick, Chapter Four. That's what's coming out in theaters ten this weekend, y'all. Actually, comes out tonight. Some of you guys might even be watching it. I do want to give a, a couple shout outs real quick. Um, if you like video games, uh, Cold Bang Games. It's uh, one of our recommended channels, and when you when you go to the About section on our channel, is doing a live stream of Destiny Two, baby. Go go check it out. Aaron over there, who runs the channel, is uh, making great things. He became YouTube partner not too long ago. Uh, got some really fun content. Go check him out. Um, and uh, I want to give a shout out, as always, to one of our faithful fans, Creed. What's up, Creed? Um, you uh, you rock, man. You're really, really a great big fan for us, and I, I can't thank you enough. Um, let's see. I love shouting people out and hyping people up. If you were on Twitch, um, uh, our good buddy Ryan Bonebreak, man, does some great like Mario uh, Kart live streams. Uh, we Universe, Me You. I'm not sure. I don't have a Switch. Uh, I need to get one. I know that the Mario movie's coming out, so that would be a perfect time to purchase a Nintendo Switch. That would be awesome. Um, I had a Wii, you know, the Wii U, the GameCube, the N64. I still love the N64. That's my favorite system of all time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff. That'd be cool to find in a thrift store somewhere, right? An old Game Boy, uh, you know, uh, an original Atari. Man, that would be neat. Uh, that's kind of why I like to watch storage auction shows. Um, so let's go on Discovery Plus. So. Uh, let's see, um, Sist uh, like Seeking Brother Husband is the show that comes out on Sunday, if you guys like the, you know, reality TV show of it all. Um, I know Love is Blind Season 4 comes out on Netflix this weekend. Um, I know every Thursday you can catch School Spirit on Paramount Plus, which is a really cool show. Um, it's got, like, a lot of teen drama vibe, but it also has a great mystery, a whodunit. So if you're fans of, like, true crime... You know, only murders in the building, that kind of thing. Check it out. Uh, Mandalorian every Wednesday. This most recent episode was pretty special. I really, really enjoyed it. You know why? Because our boy Ahmad Best. Do you know what that? Do you know who that is? I'm gonna tell you who that is. But our boy Ahmad Best had full redemption. So if you are a fan of the prequels of Star Wars, then God bless you, right? Most folks liked certain aspects of Darth Maul, right? Most folks hated Jar Jar Binks. And Ahmad Best was the motion capture. You know, he actually wore a makeshift Jar Jar Binks costume. So he did the mocap work and the voice work for the character. And now, all those people that ridiculed him back then are eating humble pie because in this episode of Star Wars, uh, The Mandalorian, he has full redemption, y'all. He's the one. Spoiler alert. All right, I'm waiting. Spoiler alert. He's the one that saved baby Grogu from Order 66 in the Jedi Temple. That's right. He's the one that prevented baby Grogu from, you know, being sliced and diced by Anakin 
I hate sand Skywalker. So, and he had, was dual wielding lightsabers. It was magnificent. It was super freaking cool. So y'all, you know, check that out. Check that out. Um, so what do we have coming from on the channel? Uh, we have another live stream this Sunday. Uh, Nerdy Dustin and I will actually be back together. Uh, welcome back together again on a live stream this Sunday. I've got a cool video coming out tomorrow where somebody on this channel in the comments uh, suggested a challenge for me, for me to take a $1 bill, a single dollar bill, go to a Goodwill, find the most random movie, watch it and review it, and I did, and boy, what a fun adventure that was. Speaking of adventure, that was really, really cool. So I have that filmed. It's gonna be dropping on the channel tomorrow. Um, so if, if you're like, hey, I'd rather watch something on uh, Geek Pulse, um, then John Wick chapter four, no, watch both. Watch our video first, then go watch John Wick chapter four. And after you've seen it, come back to this video and let me know what you thought. Um, is John Wick getting stale for you? Will you be there for John Wick chapter 15,000 or 12 or John Wick 10 at least? I think this movie can go 10. If Fast and Furious can get 10 movies, then John Wick can easily get 10 movies. Easy. So yeah, let me know. Are you? Do you have the fatigue? Do you have the John Wick fatigue? Oh man, let's just let's talk about a little bit of a T. Let's talk about some um, DCU T. And T equals drama to those folks that are in the know. Um, man, they are blaming Dwayne the Rock Johnson for the failure of Shazam to Fury of the Gods and. I don't think he has that much to do with it. Just because he didn't want to fight Shazam and he'd rather fight Henry Cavill's Superman, that's a choice that he made. And as a comic fan, as a comic book fan, uh, you know of Shazam, we know that the main antagonist to Shazam is Black Adam. It makes sense. Peanut butter and jelly, the two of them fight together. The Rock, though, thought that it would be a more epic, you know mashup if he fought Henry Cavill, one big dude versus another big dude. And I get it, you know, at the time and still to this day and probably for the rest of everyone that's a Snyderverse fan's life, Superman will be it for them and Henry Cavill will be Superman always. So I get it for The Rock wanting to fight Superman, you know? It's like the, why not go up with against the best? Although I like Zachary Levi's Shazam and I think that would be a fine film. Uh, a mashup. So what happened is that apparently Shazam to um, the director was not given the rights or the availability to have the Justice Society of America do a cameo at the end because The Rock's like, nope. And apparently um, The Rock also vetoed having a uh, Shazam cameo in Black Adam. So I don't know. Is that the reason the movie failed? No. I, I really think that having a soft reboot is what's really making the these films fail if it was a hard reboot even even announcing a reboot when there's three films left is like an iffy move right so now you're like why do i need to watch shazam 2 why do i need to watch the flash because of michael keaton obviously but why do i need to watch blue beetle why do i need to watch aquaman 2 if they're just going to retcon the whole thing um what are the stakes there are no stakes you know there's a lot it's what's the opposite of steak fish no, even fish is good. Baloney? I don't know. God, baloney's also good. But anyway, whatever the opposite of steak is, probably vegetables, because, well, all right, carrots specifically, because carrots suck. But yeah, so the opposite of steak, you know, um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a comic book fan. I'm a movie fan. I just want to go see films because they're fun to watch. I don't care if they're connected to a thousand different movies or there's not going to be extended universe anymore. Yeah, I just want to see a movie that entertains me and moves me. Uh, makes me excited. Um, actually, watching Shazam 2 made me more excited about a superhero film than Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a DC fan versus a Marvel. I'm not like hardcore left or right when it comes to the spectrum. Uh, I'll see a movie and just judge it on the, the basis of its character. So I just really enjoyed Shazam. And I might get hate for that on the internet, but you know, I uh, don't care. <laughs> I could care less uh, about any sort of hate from the internet. Uh, I just got a thick skin and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just a happy-go-lucky person that always just is going to have a good day and smile my way through. So yeah, uh, I, I did. I enjoyed it better. But hey, I don't know. I, I'm excited about The Flash. I'm excited about Blue Beetle too. We've not really seen anything from it. And I think that was kind of what made Shazam 2 kind of, that's part of it, why it failed, was because uh, th there was no marketing for it, right? Like none. 
I did uh, 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 a movie review, a retro movie, movie review the other day of like Batman Forever. And it was like a guilty pleasure f movie for me in the Batman movie universe, right? Back in my day, which I love to say because it makes me sound old, and I am. I'm almost 40. Back in my day, when a movie came out, there was tie-ins everywhere. And it was gratuitous, obviously, but, you know, there was cool products. So when a movie came out, and McDonald's, of all places, which had Happy Meals and a ball pit, yeah, back in the day, right? R.I.P. McDonald's ball pits. I'm going to pour one out for the homies. Um, produce something really cool, as in awesome frosted glasses with characters on it. You wanted to see the movie even more because, yeah, the tie-in merch was awesome. Batman cereal. Uh, Batman everything. There was Shazam 2 nothing. Really? I mean, think about it. Barely any action. There was no, I don't think, any action figures at Walmart. Uh, you didn't see hardly any, like, TV spots. You saw a trailer here and there. But the hype for it was non-existent from the studio. And if the studio doesn't believe in their film, then why should any of the rest of us? Right? So that's kind of one of the reasons that it didn't do well. But hey, there's still a chance to see it. It's going to come out on HBO Max very soon because they want to try to recoup something. It's going to go on to demand first so that you can watch it for 20 bucks in the comfort of your own home instead of going to the, the movie theater for it, which you should. I mean, just go to the movie theater. Support, support your local theater specifically. Like if you got a mom and pop, if you got a mom and pop, I just like that. Sounds fun. If you got a mom and pop theater, go to that theater and support them first. Then go to Regal or whatever and then, you know, watch it at home. But uh, so I guess that there's a chance that Shazam might come in probably, what, third, right? There's no way that Shazam 2 is going to beat John Wick 4. John Wick 4 is going to lead the box office this, this entire weekend. Um, and I don't know what's going to come in second. But yeah, so that's 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 what's going to happen in the, in the box office is John Wick 4 hits. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm a John Wick fan through and through. Um, as far as streaming stuff in your own home, not too much to look forward to. Uh, other than, like I said, The Mandalorian Episode 4? Are we halfway through already? Oh my god, man. We're already halfway through Season 3 of The Mandalorian. Also, I don't think, I, I, I don't know. Remember when The Mandalorian was, was, the hype was there and every single YouTube channel was like doing a review and a deep dive of every single video? Um, but like I said, the fact that Ahmad Best had redemption for having to be Jar Jar Binks was awesome, personally. Like, that episode was, was great. Um, having an extra long episode about like uh, Dr. Pershing and the cloner was weird, so I really was happy to see Grogu back in the saddle. We got, uh, you know, Mando back, and then we got to see some, uh, you know, some flashbacks. And Ahmad Best gets to play that awesome Jedi that saves Grogu. Again, spoiler, I'm sorry if you've not seen the episode yet. It came out yesterday. Today's already Thursday. Uh, and then um, School Spirits, again, pretty cool show. That's on uh, Paramount+. Plus. I tell you, it's hard to pick a favorite streaming um if there's something out in the theaters, I'm going to see it in the theater because there's nothing like watching a movie with an audience, right? The the oohs, the ahs, specifically like, you know, horror movies. Go see a horror movie in, in the audience. Uh, we are only 29 days away from Evil Dead Rise. 29 days. I can't wait. Oh, my God. It's going to be so good. But, yeah, but, uh, you know, when when, a, when the, there's a moving scene, the audience cries. If there's a comedy scene, everyone laughs. I mean, that's what's missing in your home unless you get, like, 20 friends and they're just, like, you pounding some brewskis and you're just watching a funny movie. That's awesome too. But, you know, so go see something in the theater. So let's talk about favorite streaming real quick. Um, uh, Peacock is really bringing in some really great uh, original programming. Uh, I loved Poker Face very much. And of course, if you're a fan of The Office, like this but, uh, dude right here, and are you a super fan? Oh my God, those super fan episodes of The Office are insanely cool because like there is so much cut footage that they just put back in. Uh, man, it's so good. Um, I recently started, I'm, I'm way late in the bandwagon, okay? I recently started watching Reacher on uh, Prime. That was, that's good, man. That dude that plays Reacher, he's a mountain. That guy's like f literally a brick wall, but he's a, he does a great job as Jack Reacher. Um, so that's good. I'll be probably watching more of that this weekend. Um, what else? I can't wait for more Only Murders in the Building. That's what Hulu uh, it, like does best. Hulu's got like that like category locked up uh, HBO Max obviously The Last of Us ended I'm very excited to see what 
what HBO Max, what do you guys think is going to be the next big thing on HBO Max? Um, I know we've got another season of um, Game of Thrones, not OG Game of Thrones, a new Game of Thrones coming out. Um, Westworld's dead. They've canceled a bunch of other programming. I don't know. I guess The Idol with uh, The Weeknd and Johnny Depp's daughter, that could be a big hit for uh, HBO. I, I want some more Righteous Gemstones. Where, where are we at on that? Usually The Righteous Gemstones premieres in um, January, and it might not premiere till June. So that would be kind of cool. That would be worth the wait. I'm not sure. And Netflix, of course, is cranking out probably Wednesday season two. They're probably working on that super hardcore right now. Um, let's see. Um, Patrick Bateman. Yeah, The Righteous Gemstones season three is going to be peak. It absolutely is going to be peak. Um, I was very lucky to do probably four episodes of The Righteous Gemstones season three. Um I um I can't. <laughs> All right, I I I did I signed an NDA. Anytime I do background stuff, you sign an NDA. But it is hard as fuck to not talk about the cool shit that you get to see even if you're not in front of the camera. The stuff you get to witness on that show is next level, man. Like I, I can't preach enough to you guys out there. If you have a chance to be on any TV show or there I know Charleston, South Carolina, where we're at, they're starting OBX season four. So that's starting to ramp up. Uh, but yeah, be on a TV show. Like, do some extra work because, uh, damn, dude, like, it's fun as shit. You get paid fairly well. You get to hang out with some actors. You get fed most of the time. Tremendously awesome. And you get to see how it works. You get to pull back the curtain of how film uh, and movies are made. It's super awesome. But yeah, The Righteous Gemstone season three. Man, we're in for some crazy shit we're in from some really great guest stars i think i can announce some of them i think they've been announced like steve zahn of course is going to be on season three of the righteous gemstones um eliza schlesinger man i always butcher her last name i'm sorry eliza if you're watching schlesinger man i always sound drunk when i say it eliza schlesinger she's on there um, the big cameo in, in season two was like Macaulay Culkin. Nerdy Dustin got to meet Macaulay Culkin. I was so jealous. I got to meet Eric Andre, which was pretty cool, and pretty much everybody else. But Nerdy Dustin, he got to be on set and meet Macaulay Culkin. I met Macaulay Culkin one time, but he was filming Richie w Rich back in the 90s in, in Asheville, North Carolina. That shit was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so HBO Max has got those shows. Um, Paramount Plus has got some pretty go uh, good original programming. Uh, Apple TV, guys. Do you guys watch Apple TV? I mean, I, I, I like downloaded it. That sounds like an old person thing to say. I, I put it on the TV equally as old. Whatever, however the fuck you watch it. I put it at, and I was scrolling through and Ted Lasso, obviously. I'm like, what is the hype about? And I'm like, oh my God, Jesus Christ, where's my, where's my tissues? This shit's moving me to tears. I don't even watch football. Yes, I'm from America and I know that America is called soccer, right? I don't even watch like real football. But as soon as I started watching Ted Lasso, I'm like, I gotta see what this football thing's about. And I watched uh, Welcome to Wrexham and all that stuff on um, uh, freaking... Whatever the damn thing is. Zachary Levi just started a live video against my live video, Zachary Levi? How dare you? I'm just joking. Still, though, how dare you? Um, but yeah, no, Apple TV. Do you guys watch anything else on there? I There is a cool show called Central Park, which I, I love Bob's Burgers. I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm having a bad day or a sad day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on some Bob's Burgers and have like a badass day because Bob's Burgers really brightens up any room it's in. Right, but Central Park is made by the same creators and a lot of the same voice cast, and that's on Apple TV Plus. And I started watching that, and I'm like, that's pretty cool. And then you know, Josh Gad does a voice on that, and sometimes Josh Gad just like rubs me the wrong way. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know if it's his voice or his face, just something about it. Mm? I'm not. I mean, I'm anyway, not knocking the guy. I'm sure he's a lovely human being, but he's not too Josh Gad on this, if you, if that makes sense. Um, oh. FX. That's that's what I really want to talk about. Like FX, we're getting some another great season of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, one of the best shows of all time, obviously. Um, and what we do in the shadows. Give if you 
if you like what we do in the shadows, like this video, man. Like, you know, not don't like it for me. Like it because you, uh, what we do in the shadows. That is next level comedy. I mean, that that speaks to everything I love. I love comedy. I love horror. You mix the mix the two together. You've got like Shaun of the Dead, things like that. Obviously, the Evil Dead, Dale and Tucker versus Evil. But what we do in the shadows. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait for the new season of that show. It's going to be legitimately awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh yeah. Nope. Totally agree. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, John Wick Chapter 4 has... I, here's what I want for John Wick Chapter 5. It's always sunny in Philadelphia stars Luigi. You were right, Creed. Man, Mario. Are you guys excited about the Mario movie? There's nobody more excited than Creed himself. Mario movie's gonna be legit. But yeah, Charlie Day. So I, I made a list of, you know, if I become famous enough, is that a word, on YouTube, or when I get these acting gigs, if I'm if I'm able to work with Charlie Day, that would, oh my God, I, I was going to say that would make my day, but how fucking corny is that? But it's true. <laughs> Man, if I got to work with Ch Charlie Day, that would be amazing. Oh my gosh. Rob McElhenney, any of them, really. Dane DeVito, I would might as well just plant me in the ground, dead right there. That's the penguin, son. And Louis De Palma. Um, but no, uh, yeah. It's always sunny. Philadelphia. Stars. Luigi. I really think that Charlie Day is going to do a great job uh, with Luigi's voice. I'm just saying. It's going to be great. That Mario movie. Creed, when does the Mario movie come out? Type in the comments. I forgot. Like, I know it's soon. But yeah, type in the comments, Creed, when the Mario movie's coming out. Um, it's going to be great. He's also Benny in the Lego movie. Spaceship! <laughs> he's just endearing uh he actually was also what was he also in the godzilla movies or something no he was in the pacific rim movies april 5th patrick bateman beat you to it april 5th that shit's right around the corner it might as well it might as well be april 5th right now you got april fool's day which everyone loves and then you got april 5th which is mario day oh well, man I was thinking about getting like a Luigi. April seventh was originally all right. They changed it. They bumped it up a day because they're gonna. They're the gift that keeps on. They know how good this movie is. I mean, they know. They're promoting the shit out of it like they should when they have faith in the movie, and they know how good it is. Let's 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 make it. You know, let's have people watch it earlier. Why the fuck not? It's gonna be great, Mario. Um, no, I was thinking about it. Like, I want to do a Luigi cosplay or a Wild Luigi would be cool. Um, how has Paul Allen been, Patrick Bateman? Oh my God, please, yes. American Psycho. I almost wore an American Psycho shirt tonight for the live stream uh, because uh, my one of my, if probably my top five in horror films, like number five would be American Psycho. Um, I actually rewatched American Psycho 2 the other day and was just, just equally as disappointed as the first time I watched it. I'm like, is it going to get better with age? No, it's not. Mila Kunis, I like you, girl, and all the other stuff you do, but not American Psycho 2. Oof. Nerdy Dustin should do that. You try, should try to uh, still speechless that he's alive. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I, I would love to do a, a Patrick Bateman cosplay. I'd have to shave my beard, obviously. I would do it, get the raincoat, the axe, you know, put on Huey Lewis in the news. I actually have <laughs> the sports album on vinyl. Shit, I do. I'm not going to get it, but I do have sports on vinyl by Hugh Lewis in the news. Because I love the band, and I love American Psycho. So, was American Psycho all in his head? I never understood that. So, how about this? So, American Psycho is really like an allegory for 80s greed. It wasn't in his head, but because of his status, he literally got away with murder with everything, right? And the whole thing was about like how rich white dudes were just interchangeable in Wall Street, you know? That whole card scene, that was why that was so important because literally everyone's business cards fucking looked the same, but it was a clout and like it was comedic that oh, mine's in sandstone and like it's got raised whatever, you know? American Psycho was was like literally about the greed in the 80s, like uh and that's why he got away with murder because they didn't know who he was. Um no, he was crazy. 
legitimately crazy uh and he legitimately killed people and legitimately got away with it i don't think it was all in his head i'd be happy to see what you guys think but it wasn't all in his head that scene that that card scene is comedy gold um i forget chloe savini was in that that whole scene too was pretty tense where he um has the nail gun right and he's brought her into the apartment and he decides not to kill her but he opens the fridge there's a head in there it's it's very very like ted bundy i think his character too was a little bit ted bundy um and uh you know he's got the nail gun very tense scene there's so many great scenes of course running naked with a chainsaw running naked with a chainsaw in a movie takes balls christian bale like him love him hate him whatever man's got balls um immediately after that he got what like rail thin for the machinist and after the machinist he got buff again to play uh batman did you, uh did you guys like um him as batman not not the question is not do you like the dark knight or batman begins but do you like christian bale as batman let me know in the comments uh what you thought of him as as batman not as bruce wayne christian bale as batman let me know um but yeah I I, th I hope to God. All right, so Creed said, uh, hot take. I used to be upset that Willem Dafoe character had no payoff, but now... Yes, well said. There's a... <laughs> if you want to... If you're having a bad day, right? Or if you're like, what movies am I going to watch? Let's say you've watched John Wick Chapter 4 already, and you've, you've brushed through all your streaming shows. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch three movies back to back to back. So I want you to watch American Psycho and then Boondock Saints and The Lighthouse. And then that's peak Defoe, man. Peak Willem Defoe. His Batman is a bit overrated in my opinion, but it's it still isn't bad either. I all right, I'm glad you said that cuz yes. His Batman to me, even though I liked the movie, I The Dark Knight is my favorite Batman movie of all time that's um that's not animated. Batman the Mask of the Phantasm, which I have on the shelf there somewhere, is the best Batman movie of all time. Let's just fucking be honest. Um, just like Zombie Island is the best Scooby-Doo movie. All right. Um, but no, it is over. His, his performance is overrated. He did too much in the voice. They should have reeled in his voice a little bit. His Batman voice is comical. Absolutely. Christopher Nolan. Why? Why? Just somebody in... in, in sound and post or something should have been like guys you know we've already especially in the third film we've already got a very interesting bane voice we've already got like he sounds like he has a, he's a british guy with a cold we've got a very interesting take on bane let's maybe dial the batman voice back a little bit how about it and no one did and here we are uh but yeah his batman was a little bit overrated um uh, to me i agree you, i love y'all's opinions man you guys are just slaying it with your opinions tonight i love it let's keep the conversation going um all right how about this then okay Re real deal thoughts right now i was devastated when kevin conroy died man that's your childhood died man part of my childhood le legitimately died i did have the supreme honor to meet him before he passed away at a convention um that's another thing. I mentioned at the very the beginning of this video, going on adventures. Don't wait. If there's a convention that you want to go to, just go to it. Get get some autographs from your favorite people. Just like Jason David Frank. He spent like so many years at conventions seeing his fans. He was the Green Ranger. He inspired so many people. Um, but then there's still people I know that never got a chance to see him. And I'm like, what what stopped you? Because it's not like he didn't appear at conventions. He went to all of them. Go see him. Like Creed, if you ever get a chance to uh, meet Chris Pratt at a convention, go do it. You know, Charlie Day, Luigi, meet him. Jack Black, God dang, I'd love to meet Jack Black. That would be amazing. Um, so, Pattinson. Let's talk about the next Batman real quick. Let's roll into some Batman talk real quick. What did you think of Robert Pattinson as Batman? Let's don't forget about his Bruce Wayne. His Bruce Wayne sucked. I, I can't. There's probably nobody in the world that said his Bruce Wayne. His Bruce Wayne was really good. I just saw a spot for The Good Son. This movie is amazing. Uh, if Willem Dafoe was in it, I'll also say do another watch on that. But no, 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 no. The Good Son is so underrated as a horror film. Macaulay Culkin. That would be a great remake, man. Let's make another Good Son. You know we're getting another Twins movie? Freaking Arnold and Danny DeVito 
are making another Twins movie. And it's actually, I think, called Triplets because the third son is Tracy Morgan. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, it is that time of the stream where, again, like, I work hard, you know. I also have, like, hard quirk, y'all. So we're going to read another letter from E.T. The best Batman ever. His Bruce Wayne is not developed, so I love him. Ah, Cree. I love your opinions. You've got the best opinions. I loved Robert Pattinson as Batman, and I think that his detective work and the way he moved and all of it, uh, the choices he made as Batman, uh, pretty much ripped straight from the comics. So I'm very excited. Very, very excited to see the next Robert Pattinson movie. Honestly, I was thinking about this the other day. The whole new DCU thing, aside from like Swamp Thing and some like minor projects, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about like Superman. I, I'm like, fuck all that. Let's go ahead and just like see what Matt Reeves does in the, the new Batman universe. Uh, the Penguin started filming. So I've seen some set photos of the Penguin. The, so... I'm excited about The Penguin on HBO Max. It was bringing it back home. Bringing it back home is streaming. I'm excited about The Penguin on HBO Max. And I'm really excited about Daredevil Born Again on uh, Disney+. Plus. Which it's been a long time since I've been excited about anything really on Disney+. Plus. Um, I love the combination of the long Halloween and Batman Year One. Yes. Two of my favorite stories. Like two of my favorite comic uh, arcs. Comic arcs? Yeah. Stories. Shit. There's another word for it. I'm forgetting. Um, Storylines. I love The Long Halloween. Tim Sale's artwork, first of all, was some of my favorite art ever. But The Long Halloween is hard to beat. My calendar man, all of it. Man, Falcone, it's perfect. And then uh, a little bit of No Man's Land, too. Did you guys pick up on that? I, I felt a little bit of No Man's Land uh, vibe, too, with the, the flooding. Um, a little bit of Court of Owls, and I really want more Court of Owls in the next film. Uh, Mario changed my life for the better. How did Mario change your life for the better? That's a question. But while you're typing, if you've never seen one of these live streams that I've done solo, this is only the second one I've done, but I always read a letter to E.T., right? Hard quirk. That's what you do. I'm quirky. I'm weird. I love movies and live streams. And there was a time when movies moved people so much that they wanted to write letters to imaginary characters as if they were real. And what is real? I guess it is real to some people. Uh, I'd write a letter to Johnny Five. Man, I love Short Circuit. That's That movie, I, I'd be okay with another Short Circuit movie, if I'm being honest. Uh, let's go right here. Let's see. I'm going to pick a short one. Okay, here we go. 2ET. Hi! Exclamation point. How are you? Did you have a, tra a safe trip home? Uh, July 22nd is my birthday, and I've seen your movie. I have 12 packs of your cards, which is 100 cards. Um, when is your birthday? Uh, will you send me an autograph and Mr. Spielberg's autograph? He made me realize I could do anything no matter how hard I was knocked down. That is the Mario way. Creed? Man, I, I really think that that's going to be le legitimately the theme of the new Mario movie. It's the everyman. Mario is everyone. And... For Mario to make that happen in your life, dude, it's amazing. It's awesome. And thank you. Dude, thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you. Will you send me your autograph and Mr. Spielberg's autograph? Uh, Mr. Spielberg, your movie Raiders of the Lost Ark should have won the best movie of the year. Okay, Michael, you're fucking right about that. I can't wait for the new Indiana Jones movie. Talk, talk about movies that changed my life. Indiana Jones was one of those. Uh, please write back and please send me your autographs. So, write me back, E.T. Send me autographs. It's my birthday. Great letter. Great letter. Ooh, all right. Let's read, read another one. Uh, this one has a cool picture, of course. That's Drew Barrymore. I, it's sometimes hard to imagine, too, that Drew Barrymore also got her start here. Dear E.T., I'm 10 years old, and I'm in the fifth grade. I saw E.T. two times, and my cousin Jenny looks like Gertie. This summer, I went camping, and I put a bag of Reese's Pieces on the table, and in the morning, they were gone. Did you eat them? You're the best creature on Earth, or in space. E.T. is better than all the movies ever made put together. I would love to see you real. Your friend, forever. Peter. 
That's amazing. That's just amazing. Look at that. Look at that art. That's weird. Um, I really didn't like E.T. <laughs> E.T. kind of scared me as a kid, which is weird because I love horror movies. But I live, I grew up in uh, like Pensacola, Florida area. And there's an area called Gulf Breeze that had sort of like more UFO uh, encounters and sightings than anywhere in the world. Um, his parents probably ate them so the, or so a random creature. I like to think that his parents pretended to be E.T. more than a bear snuck in and ate those Reese's Pieces and decided not to eat little Timmy in, you know, that's like a cocaine bear situation for real life. Uh, Reese's Pieces bear. Um, but yeah, I think that's what happened. And good, good on his parents for making him think that and writing this letter. Uh, but yeah, E.T., I don't know. It kind of freaked me out as a kid, uh, even though I love Jaws at the same time. Jaws was my favorite movie, and I would go to the ocean because I'm like, I want to see Jaws. But I, I just didn't like the idea of like um, being abducted out of my bed in the middle of the night and taken into space and experimented on. That's just not my jam. Uh, although, I really wanted to, to meet Alf. Alf was, was my dude, dude. Like, Alf... Right here. I'd love to find like an ALF puppet somewhere, but like I got this cool book still in the package from childhood, ALF makes a splash, right? Also, ALF cools off, ALF makes a splash, ALF hides out, ALF on the move. There's so many ALF books, but um, this recommendation too um, on what to watch, whether it's uh, old Mario Super Sunday show episodes, because I found them, um, or, uh, you know, old episodes of Alf or whatever. Tubi, guys, uh, Nerdy Dustin and I were talking, and we are going to start making more films. Uh, we've made a couple films, and they're on the channel, so if you scroll through, uh, we don't always do, um, yeah. Alf has a dark ending. Alf pretty much just got, a, like, taken off to the FBI and, and murdered or something. Alf was, it was really dark. It's kind of a downer. Like, the Quantum Leap ending was kind of a downer, too. He never made it. He never made the leap home. Spoiler alert. But uh, yeah, so Nerdy, and du Nerdy Dust and I are going to make some more films. We're going to make some horror films. We're going to make some comedies. We might even make like a documentary about uh, Mario. Uh, we're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's our gang. You're dang right. Like the dance, the song was amazing, Creed. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do some movies and we're going to try our best to put them on Tubi. So if you're an aspiring filmmaker, put some stuff on YouTube, but also try to contact Tubi. So that's a great route for you. So if you've got like a short film, you've created something really funny, kooky, weird, wild, contact Tubi. So Tubi will take your film and they'll run it on their platform and they'll pay you quarterly, which is pretty cool. So, and it doesn't cost the consumer anything to get Tubi. You're just watching it for the ads. So that's how they're making the money. So if you're a filmmaker out there, you're watching it, Try to, like, at least try to sell part of your movie to Tubi. I wouldn't sell your best movie to Tubi because you can probably get more money on Netflix or something like that. But, yeah, if you got a fun film you guys made with your friends, the, the more weird the better, sell it to Tubi. Creed says, I love Princess Peach in the Mario movie. She is awesome. Yeah, and I like the actress who's doing the voice of Princess Peach, too. Um, what princess should be in the next film? Uh, Luna or Daisy? Or even a new princess? I don't know. I, I do think that they need to get away from princesses in Mario 2. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. There's going to be a Mario 2. I'm sure it's already greenlit. Honestly, they're probably already writing the script for the new like Super Mario Bros. movie like 2. Guarantee you. It's already, already written. The movie's going to make a billion dollars. So, Daisy, yes. Luna would be cool too. But yeah, Princess Daisy would be amazing. Or Princess Zelda. No. Let's not do the crossover too quick. Um... Nah, it's too quick for that. Uh, but yeah, no, Mario is going to blow everyone away on uh, in April. Just right around the corner, April 5th, guys. Man, I cannot believe it. And like I said, 29 days to Evil Dead Rise. There's a lot of films coming out. I I'm legitimately excited about the Dungeons & Dragons movie, right? So I, I play d and I play Pathfinder. You're like, well, yeah, no shit you do. Look at you, you're a big-ass nerd. You're damn right I am. I'm fucking proud of it. If you guys are nerds out there too, be proud of that. You play D&D, &D, who cares? Nothing wrong with it. Um, but I was a little bit leery. Well, like Chris, Chris Pine, it's going to be comedy and stuff like that. But the more I see the trailers and the more I hear reviews, I cannot wait for Dungeons & Dragons. The only problem that I see with people having uh, is Luigi is not with Mario on the adventure, but I think he will be at the end. I do think that's going to be the key. Um, instead of having the princess captured, we've got Luigi captured. And 
they're actual brothers in this, so you've got that familial bond. Like, um, imagine if you're sucked into another universe, but you have like either your best friend or your brother. You know, so that's going to be, all right, cool. I'm in a, a brand new world. Mushrooms talk and I can jump on turtles and there's a monkey that talks and he wants to fight me. But at least I have my brother with me or I, I have my best friend. But then that is taken away from you instantly. Then that's what you're going to be fighting for. Probably more so than your own return home. You're going to be fighting for your loved one to join back up. So, um, uh, yeah, I do think that, that that might be a little bit upsetting to some people. I love, I want to see a scene where like near the end, they have to do something in like a house and Luigi uh, has to like suck up some goats, and, uh, not goats, suck up ghosts in a vacuum cleaner. How cool would that shit be if we have some like uh, Luigi sucking up ghosts? Uh, Luigi's Haunted Mansion, man. Uh, I love those games. Those games are really legitimately fun. And as a fan of Ghostbusters and a fan of like the Mario universe, it's pretty much mixing the two together. So I love that shit. Um, speaking of Ghostbusters, did you guys see that just here recently they started filming Ghostbusters Firehouse? Uh, but I don't think it would hold back. Yeah, no, I don't think it will hold back the movie either, Creed, that, that uh, Mario and Luigi aren't starting out the adventure together. They're going to join back up at some point and just kick some fucking ass, right? Um, but yeah, no, I saw, I had almost forgotten that we're getting another Ghostbusters movie at the end of the year. I actually think it's going to be critically acclaimed. Call me crazy. That's not crazy at all, Creed. Um, the, the world is primed for a critically acclaimed Mario movie, and this has a very good chance to be that. And we're only seeing the surface level, right? We're, we, we only have seen really kind of a small sampling. We know that Bowser's after certain things. Hey, it's Mario. People are going to watch it regardless. Yeah, no matter what. It, I mean, that's why people watch the first Mario movie, right? The John Leguizamo movie. But because it's Mario, people are going to go to theaters. But I really think that the the movie itself is going to bring people back and back. So I'm going to watch the movie immediately when it comes out because I'm a huge fan of Mario. And I want to see how the story goes and everything like that. And then I'm going to watch the movie a second time just to catch all the Easter eggs. Because you know, you know it's going to be covered in Easter eggs. Covered in Easter eggs. Like everywhere every scene is going to be so how fun would it be you got your friends with you you've seen the movie already one time but you have a competition to who to see who can spot more easter eggs in the movie dude if we all live close together that would be what we would do uh there's no greater fun in my opinion than you got to see that movie second time and we have like a fun friendly competition to see who finds more easter eggs boy awesome Awesome. And it might even have like a crazy like stinger ending. It might have some post credit scenes. It might have some scenes that really make us cry and feel emotions. It might be setting up some really big movies down the line. We don't know because again, we've only seen the surface. Bowser is out to conquer the universe and that's really pretty much the driving force. The one thing that it was always give the original Mario movie is that Mario Mario actually is, uh, it's, it's a joke. That became canon. What's your name? Mario, Mario. What's your first name? Mario. What's your last name? Mario. And now it's Mario, Mario. I like Dennis Hopper, man. Dude, um, I like, you know, Blue Velvet and, you know, you know Easy Rider and shit like that. And um, Dennis Hopper and what he decided to do as Bowser, crazy. And I like the little tiny head. Like, I don't know. The aesthetic for me, again, I'm a kid of the 80s. So anything that looks overly 80s, even Miami Vice, I'll watch Miami Vice sometimes just for the Phil Collins song and the fucking awesome car. And the fact that it reminds me of like 80s and like the weird neon vibe and like Mario, that Super Mario Brothers movie is so 80s. Yeah. Dennis Hopper. What? Dennis Hopper was... He, he did not realize that, like, he was in a Mario movie, right? So Dennis Hopper was in, like, it felt like he was in a whole different film. Like, he was bringing his most Dennis of Hopperness to that movie. He didn't care that they were doing, like, a movie based on a child's video game. No. You know what would be cool? An Earthworm Jim video game. Nope, not video game, movie. An Earthworm Jim movie. Because I also really, really grew up loving Earthworm Jim. So I think that the idea of an Earthworm Jim movie would be pretty awesome. And have Jim Carrey play Earthworm Jim. Yeah. I w so, like, yes. Uh, I want a cold take, I want a hot take, but give me the hottest take you got, Creed. What is a hot take? Go ahead and throw it out there. Diet Cheer Wine, not a sponsor, but maybe one day. Who knows? Hot take. I can't wait for this. I cannot wait for, for your hot take. I got a hot take too. 
I'll wait to go after you do. What else, man? There's so many things. Yeah, Dungeons & Dragons. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a superior film. Uh, Chris Pine. Chris Chris Pine. There's so many Chris's. Too many fucking Chris's. But Chris Pine is, uh, you know, I love. that's one of the reasons I love the new Star Trek movies. I'm kind of sad that we don't get another one of those. Sonic movies are not that good. I know child, uh, no childish Marvel fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, the Mario movie, the Sonic movies didn't need any humans at all besides Robotnik. I just, like, I didn't believe, like, you know, his love of, like, the, uh, what's his name? The dude from... I don't know the actor's name. Oh, Cyclops. See, I blocked it out because I hate Cyclops as a character. But that's just me. That's a hot take. That's my hot take. I hate Cyclops as a character. No matter no matter who they cast for all of the new X-Men movie that Marvel eventually is going to make 20,000 years from now, um, I don't... Hot take. The Dark Knight was great, but it ruined DC in the long term by making everything dark. That's a hot take. But I believe it to be true. Honestly, I, yeah, seriously. Um, it's like, let's crank the, and then like, it led everything on the path. Let's, let's make a, like a dark Superman. I mean, like Man of Steel was not a bad film in my opinion, but um, there's no reason to make a dark Superman. Come on, I mean, like Superman is light. L Superman is literally powered by light. So why would you make a dark, gritty Superman? Superman is powered by light. What? I don't get it. I don't get it. That's why Superman Legacy has a great potential. Let's make it all like happy-go-lucky. Hey there, chum. Sort of like back in, you know, bring it back, you know? I don't know. That's not a hot take at all. That's a, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. Green Lantern is another one. Another one what? That's like too dark or ruined or better? Green Lantern is, I, I, I don't ever think we're going to get a Green Lantern Corps movie. All right, I think I'm crying just having to be losing, uh, losing music of the mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's great. Like, Charlie Day did an interview recently, and he was talking about how, like, someone made the Mario music. It's hilarious. Check it out. Uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll react to a clip up it on one of these videos. It's really good. Uh, the Mario music is some of the best music in video games, period. Just saying. It's, like, literally some of the best. Um... I wanted to love the Green Lantern movie, and I, uh, again, like, when a whole bunch of people shit on something, I immediately have the adverse reaction. I'm like, give it a chance. Why? Come on. But then, like, I was looking, at, I was thinking, I rewatched Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds the other day, and uh, Mark Strong is the only thing I liked about it. Hell, it affected Sony a little bit by making The Amazing Spider-Man a bit dark. Damn straight! The Amazing Spider-Man was dark. Damn, still like that. <laughs> when Gwen Stacy legitimately snapped her neck and just like crashed down, man. That's like, it was dark. And not just dark in tone, dark in like field of vision, right? The Amazing Spider-Man movies are just like dark. Like that shit's like, you gotta turn the brightness up on your TV. Again, it sounds like I'm an old man, but I kind of am. Turn the brightness of the TV up. Uh, but yeah, it made superhero films dark. And DC does it best, right? If you're going to make uh, DC films that are dark, put it in the Elseworlds title, all right? This is what they should do. Put it in the Elseworlds. Uh, yeah, The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, we're try yeah, was trying to be bad. Bro. I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, so make a, a separate section, you know, or Vertigo, right? So if you're a comic book fan, you know that Vertigo titles are more adult. Put it in its own category. Brand it as that. And then have your DC universe more light and bright, you know. Honestly... Frank Miller's to blame, if I'm being 100% honest with you. So, Frank Miller, of course, you know, The Dark Knight Returns, and uh, Year One, cer certain things. They're like, hey, let's make comic books, like, super dark and gritty. So that's kind of what started the, the ball rolling on, um, but, like, The Dark Knight uh, definitely brought it to that point in, in cinema. Um, even the, the, even the, um, the first two Batman films, right? Batman Returns had some dark moments and Batman was like killing a bunch of people, but you don't really care because it's not that dark, you know, even though it comes from the mind of Tim Burton. I thought it was funny that uh, No Way Home, Andrew Garfield was the, the, the press Spider-Man, right? I do love No Way Home. Damn, shit, that shit was so good. It really was. Oh, I didn't, feel, I didn't think I would get emotional like I did seeing Toby and Andrew, but damn, they really hit me in the feels. Uh, 
The whole theater cried, man. I remember that vividly, man. Like, the whole theater was bawling. I'm like, damn, that was crazy. Um, but, hey. That's what that's what ten years of like build up will do. That's why that's why everyone in their baby not everyone in their baby. Hopefully, too many babies aren't crying in the movie theater. It's one of my pet peeves. Um, but hopefully, that when we all see Michael Keaton in the Flash movie, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna cry like a fucking baby. Uh, I actually think that Alan Moore. Yeah, okay. So yeah, okay. So so Alan Moore started right on his Swamp Thing run and stuff like that, and then uh, Frank Miller picked up the ball and ran with it. All right. And it's actually kind of connected to cinematically because if you think about it, you got Frank Miller doing 300 and you got Zack Snyder doing 300. And then Zack Snyder's like, okay, yeah, I see what Frank Miller did there. So let's go ahead and make, you know, Man of Steel dark and stuff like that. So yeah, it's all connected, man. It's all connected. Wow. Cool. you Man, I thank you. So I can't thank you guys enough. I'm not ending it right now, but I, I just wanted to thank you for like keeping this cool nerd conversation going because man, we're really bringing up some cool topics. I love the Watchmen movie, but I never stand how it got made. That was just when, like, um, everything, like, superheroes were at its pinnacle, right? And it was, like, up and coming, and, like, they're like, hey, we can make this. It's going to make a lot of money. I don't care that it's R-rated. Uh, I do think that the Watchmen movie is probably one of the most faithful uh, adaptations of uh, a, a comic book period. I mean, it was really good. I really fucking loved it. Jeffrey Dean Morgan is a comedian, man. <sighs> Chef's kiss. Damn, I should... Perfect. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how Watchmen got made either, but it did, and I'm. it's probably my favorite Zack Snyder comic book movie is The Watchmen. It has to be, right? It's not Batman v Superman. I I rewatched Batman v Superman the other day again, right? The extended director's cut. I, I first don't think that we should have to watch a director's cut to fill in the blanks of questions in the plot holes, right? If you're going to make a movie, put everything you need to know from an audience perspective about the plot in the movie don't fucking leave it on the cutting room floor and like try to double dip and sell another version of the movie uh imagine zach snyder talking to a board of wb talking about uh who we could see dr man's cock dude like you know yeah it's like here let me pitch this all right i'm gonna make a faithful adaptation to a comic book all right cool we like that marvel's doing it Okay, um, what I really need, and this is going to be a hard line for me, I'm not going to direct the movie, if not, uh, we're going to see Dr. Manhattan's big old schlong. Uh, and they're like, who now? What? Watch the movie uh, does not sugarcoat the ending, and I love it. Even though they didn't have the giant squid, I get it. Um, but uh, you really couldn't do that. I guess <laughs> you're like, yes to Dr. Manhattan's big old wiener that's blue, no to a giant squid at the end. Yes to graphic nudity uh, banging inside an owl-shaped spaceship. No to a giant squid at the end. Uh, priorities, man. Movie executives. How do their minds work? I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to be one, though. That'd be pretty cool. I love that. So I want to give one more recommendation, right? Uh, if you guys have not watched Pitch Meeting, do you guys watch this on YouTube? It's one of my favorite things in the world to watch is, is, is uh, Pitch Meeting, right? It's where, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he does like pitch meetings where he plays like the writer and he also plays the executive and he's playing the two different characters back and forth. Check out Pitch Meeting. Uh, just type in Pitch Meeting YouTube and talk about comedy gold. Also, how it should have ended, where they animate the ending of like how film should have ended. Yes, but pitch meeting is hilarious. And that's kind of what we're talking about now. It's like, what was that meeting like? And Ryan, his name is Ryan something or another. Ryan George, Ryan George, that's his name. They pulled that director's cut uh, in the, the Battle of the Five Armies. His name is Ryan George. There it is. Yep, absolutely. Ryan George, uh, watch it. It's great. Uh, pitch meeting is, it's, it's what I would love to do on YouTube, right? Is to like come up with some crazy idea like that and uh, just run with it, you know? Same thing with how it should have ended. And uh, I actually, do you guys watch um, Red Letter Media? So uh, I'm not sure, that's again going way back in YouTube, but Red Letter Media are dudes that like take like the wheel of the worst. They take the worst films ever and they, they spin the wheel and uh, they, um, you know, review like the shittiest of movies. Uh, their comedy stylings are really great. They created a character called Mr. Plinkett who reviewed um, Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace. And that's still probably the most entertaining 
review of any film I've ever seen, period. Um, if you're looking for comedy, look that up too. It's great. Uh, Mr. Plinkett, Red Letter Media. Um, but my friends, we are reaching the hour mark of the live stream. Uh, and typically, I don't want to go too far past that. We have another live stream on Sunday. The Hobbit trilogy has gotten worse with age. Boy, I don't even watch the Hobbit trilogy. I'll watch the um, Fellowship of the Ring trilogy, but I just I cannot bring myself to rewatch any of the Hobbit films. It's cash grab. It's just bloated nonsense because the film literally they're trying to squeeze three movies out of one small book. Peter Jackson, man, you know, just stop right there. He even got so ambitious too with like freaking uh, his King Kong movie that shouldn't have been three fucking hours long. Uh, where you know, bring back like Dead Alive, Peter Jackson. You know, bring back horror, Peter Jackson. You know, uh, bring back Mimic, Peter Jackson. Uh, yeah, oh, Random Street Theater, what's up, in the house, yeah, 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 don't watch them, don't, I'm telling you right now, it's weird for me to tell you not to watch a movie, uh, I'm not as, you know, ner nerdy Dustin, love him to death, but, Random Street, what's up, he's in the house, but yeah, Nerdy Dustin, my partner in crime on the channel, he and Random Street will give him shit for this all the time. I love it. He typically loves everything. That's why it was so funny to see him react to the uh, the uh, the new Ninja Turtles movie trailer because he hated it. Um, but he typically likes a bunch of stuff. And I like movies too, but I'm a little bit more critical. But don't see The Hobbit. No need. Watch the animated Hobbit film from the 70s and just forget the new ones exist. That's what I'm saying. Just forget the new ones exist. Just watch the animated. Actually, watch the animated Lord of the Rings one, too, because it's awesome. Nine films, and, and they want to do more, right? Why, are they going to make the Cimmerillion? Are they going to do a, a Tom Bombadil, right? Uh, yeah, Mutant Mayhem. That's what it is. Uh, Peter Jackson became George Lucas for a second. He did! Yeah, st he's stretching the Hobbit series like George Lucas did with the prequels. That's it, and it's all CGI gobbledygook. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's, dude, what a great point, Patrick Bateman, the coolest character in any horror movie ever. I mean, I, I really do love the name of your channel. Like your channel. It's brilliant. Um, no, that's what it is. He became George Lucas. He had George Lucasitis. And we know where that led to selling it to Catherine Kennedy. And, but I mean, yo, we also got John Favreau out of the deal. So come on, bring yourself back, Peter Jackson, to your roots and make some more like cool off the wall, mimic type shit, yeah. John Campio makes me, why does John Campio make you angry? I like that, all right, so that's a great opinion. So we're talking about movie reviewers on YouTube. Uh, John Campio, what, what about John, Johnny Boy that makes you angry? Diet cheer wine shit, I don't, I can't even, I can't even believe that's a thing. Uh, a book is normally like three movies worth of stuff. But yeah, typically, but not with The Hobbit. Like, that's a shorter book. I mean, that's, you know. We could take The Ballad of Tom Bombadil, uh, and, you know, that's a short, like, section. I'd probably make that into two movies. Um, but yeah, yeah, I get it. So, what, what most movies, I guess, if you're doing a screenplay, um, you know, it's a page a minute, right? So if you have a 90-page screenplay it's going to be 90 minutes worth of movies and it's kind of typical to match up with a book right if you got a 90 page book it might be that length of a movie um but i don't know why would they stretch money uh, it's warner brothers money they want to do more harry potter movies man like they failed so hard with the fantastic the most recent fantastic beast movie the hobbit was a short book yeah it was um you know, they're like, fuck it, let's just go ahead and just make more Harry Potter movies with the main characters. That's what we need. How about you just don't make more Harry Potter? What's up, Spoiler Kings? In the house! Uh, so I feel like he always tells the same story. Thought the movie looked bad and loved it. Yes, I do agree uh, with you, Creed, that, like, John Campy, that's his MO, right? And he just, like, plays that same narrative over and over like a broken record, right? Um, same thing with like Grace Randolph. She's like, uh, you know, women empowerment in films. Uh, but also I don't like, you know, Ray or like, you know, she's sort of like flip floppy back and forth. She's like, or like, I've got some indus industry secrets on DC movies, but I hate all DC movies. I'm like, Grace Randolph, pick a side girl. Damn. You know, 
You can't have your cake and eat it too. John Campy is like that too, though. I'm just sorry he is. Um, but John Wick, chapter four. You guys out there in the chat, Random Street, everyone, Spoiler Kings, you guys excited about chapter four at all? She said the Mario movie would bomb. Now she says it's not because she's so wishy-washy. Pick a side, girl. Um, but yeah, do you guys think that John Wick Chapter 4 is going to like fucking dominate the uh, box office? I think it's going to because, again, the, the competition is not that great. Um, I think they're going to send John Wick to 10 chapters, baby. John Wick 10, and then they're probably going to end it there. Uh, or John Wick versus like Fast and Furious. I'm down for that, too. So you've never seen a John Wick film. I... So watch the first film, Random Street Theater. Definitely watch it, right? So take your mind away from like the hype and, and what John Wick is now in pop culture. Just sit down in the evening, put in that first John Wick film, and I think that you'll be, just based on the time I've known you, I think you'll be surprised by like how, how good it is. I, I really do think, you're like, okay, this is solid, because that's what it is. Um, so you hate the Avatar movies. I'm with you, too. Oh, I love that we're giving hot takes. That's kind of what I want for the rest of the stream is just to give me some hot takes. Yeah, the Avatar movies, I, if I never watched them again, uh, I wouldn't be any worse for the wear. Like, I, I, just, I just don't need any of the Avatar movies. The new one, like, I thought that the new 3D would be awesome, but yeah, no. Yeah, man, like, oh, yeah, super excited. Uh, John Wick, uh, Brian on our channel is watching it right now. Okay, all right, cool. I cannot wait, Tank. I cannot wait for uh, your review to come out, man. Ooh, dude, I think Nerdy Dustin's going to see it. If not, I might see it this weekend, too. Yeah, Avatar is basically pretty colors in, the, in, the, in a movie. Avatar movies are old plots with blue people in them. Yes, keep the... I'm like the emperor. Yes, let the hate flow through you. It's not hate, it's truth, you know? James Cameron, I love you, baby. You've made some of my favorite films of all time, but Avatar ain't cutting it. I don't give a shit about the third Avatar movie... Avatar versus Fire, or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, it's Dance with the Wolves it with Blue People. It's the same shit. Oh, and the second Avatar movie was the first Avatar movie, legitimately, but with children. It's crazy, and but people love it. Apparently, Avatar Two, Way of the Water, is already in the top one streaming uh, movie, and it's not even out for streaming yet. It's crazy. Avatar is super pretty, but recycled stories from the Bible to Star Wars? Look, seriously, like it is. And it, it, it has fooled millions of people by its pretty colors, man. And I guess that's, that's, that's Americans 101. Most people, like if you see like, uh, like a, I don't know, this can doesn't have really good artwork. But if you see a can, it's like, ooh, it's got pretty artwork on it. And you drink it, and you're like, oh, it kind of tastes like shit, but I'm, I, I chose it because it's got pretty artwork. We like sparkly things, man. We like shiny things. And that's kind of what Avatar is, just like shiny fluff. That's really, that's all it is. And the same story over and over again. And no one cares. Well, most people don't care. I guess the billions of people that watch the movie, they don't care. The 3D wasn't even that revolutionary. I only watched Avatar 2 because there was promise that the 3D would blow our minds. I'm like, yes, okay, fine. If it's the same thing if it was as it was before, if the 3D blows my mind, I'm here for it. No. There was no advancement in 3D. It looks just like regular 3D. And 3D is not going to come back, right? It's gone. There's not. Remember when there was 3D Blu-rays? I was at the thrift store the other day, and I'd forgotten that there were 3D Blu-rays. And that's a thing. So it sounds like the whole world smoked pot before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, maybe, I don't know. Spoiler Kings, 10 years of VFX, <laughs> but one week of story building. Ooh, ow, sick burn, but that's true. 10 years to, let's, let's get these ripples off the skin correct to make it look like really the people are real and they're, they're blue and uh, yeah. I actually saw, I bought, <laughs> I bought a HD DVD the other day, right? Avatar 2 script is bad. Um, I actually bought a HD DVD the other day. Just the same way I bought a Laserdisc too. It was psycho on Laserdisc because I'm not going to turn that down. But I'm, I'm never going to buy a Laserdisc player. But it's kind of like a museum, right? It's a piece of history. Um, I do remember at the time making a solid bet with all of my cinema friends because I've always been a movie cinephile, right? Um, before the YouTube, I just, that's what's fucking it, right? I was like, Blu-ray's gonna win. Like, no, HD DVD. I'm like, no, there's no competition. Blu-ray is backed by Sony. You play it in a PlayStation. It's gonna win. And like, no, and then like legitimately, like HD DVDs are trash. VHS tapes, 
used open VHS tapes in rough condition are more valuable than HD DVD. That's crazy. And probably 3D Blu-rays or whatever. It's nuts, man. Having a 3D TV, they thought it would take off. You, it was like people like Harry Knowles. Did you guys, were you guys like into Ain't It Cool News back in the day before Harry Knowles became a big fucking pedophile or whatever the fuck he did? Yeah, PlayStation 3 made Blu-ray win that war. You better fucking believe it. That's exactly right. They won the war, period. But Harry Knowles, right? So back in the day before like YouTube really and like we had to read and you know, we had to read blog posts. I was all about Ain't It Cool News because like it was like getting scoops on the scene. I think Grace Randolph irritates me with uh, feminist takes. She will dunk on a great movie for having a... Sh yes, she will. I agree, Creed. Um, but yeah, do you guys remember that? Ain't It Cool News with Harry Knowles. So Harry Knowles is like, oh man, 3D Blu-rays Go out, buy a, my new house has got like 3D Blu-ray player and a 3D Blu-ray TV and a 3D TV. It's going to be the way of the world. I'm like, I, no, dude, it ain't. HDTV, better quality, but they had nothing to help them with win the war legitimately, right? They, they, yeah, what, I forget who made them. Was it, it wasn't Microsoft, oh, shit, I forget. But it was, a, it was a company, a well-known company, but not like as big a company as like you have in the backing of Sony, right? I like same thing with like uh freaking it was like Betamax versus um Laserdisc, right? I think that was the other two big war, like Betamax versus Laserdisc. And it was the same situation. But yeah, Blu-ray was always destined to win. Uh are you guys uh 4K? Uh spoiler kings, uh, are you still like will you go out and buy a 4K or are you still at like a Blu-ray level? Because she said the script for John Wick 4 was bad and the only one that she, she's the only one that said that. For sure, like Grace is unwatchable for me. Campia is kind of the same, but without being annoying. Yes, but Campia, like uh, like Creed was saying, is getting there. He's saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, I think it was Panasonic. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think it was Panasonic. That was who was in charge of the uh, uh, HD DVD. Uh, yeah, Grace Randolph. I don't know, man. It's weird. I still like uh, Sony. There we go. I was uh, like kind of for research to see what I can do to better provide a cool experience on YouTube, I'll watch Grace Randolph, right? Um, and I'll watch everyone because like, you know, competition breeds greatness. Um, am I am I saying I'm better than Grace Randolph? No, but you know, I probably am. Um, but no, I'll watch her. And then like, it's like kind of like sometimes like, you know, when like the teacher, like we were fucking up in class or whatever, and they would take their uh, fingernails and like scrape them down the, the blackboard. Yeah, Sony killed Betamax. John Campy irritates me. Yeah, yeah, pretending that, yeah, oh, yeah. 100% 4K when you do buy physical. I love it, man. I love 4K, too. That's why I have a, um, one of the sole reasons I got the Xbox One X is because their, their 4K player is amazing. But, yeah, Grace Randolph watching her is like the, the, the down the chalkboard. It's her voice and her, her weight. But, again, like, I watch it because I'm like, all right, so what is Grace Randolph doing that she has such a big following? Why? Can you guys tell me why? Why does everybody and their brother follow Grace Randolph? Why has she got like hundreds of thousands of views? We're all creators here, especially like Random Street Theater and Spoiler Kings. We're in the game. We, we play this game. Why in the world does Grace Randolph have that many people behind her? Is it because she's been in the game longer than we have? Is that the only reason? The longevity? Because it, like she doesn't provide anything really new, right? Nothing like revolutionary. She's not on the set taking pictures, interviewing people. It's just her sitting in what I assume is her fucking $5,000 a week loft in New York City with the damn city behind her. Um, I don't get it. Why? Uh, I don't know. Same thing with John Campia. I think that now he's just been around. And same thing with all the guys. Jeremy Johns. Jeremy Johns is kind of cool, though. Um, Jeremy Johns only comes to do, like, movie... He doesn't even do movie news. Jeremy Johns only does, like, movie reviews now. Um... But I just, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Because she's been uh, strong for so long. Okay, I get it. All right, so also, you ever watch the angry video game nerd? Love it. Nostalgia Critic also love it. Uh, she's a leaker. One out of ten right with the executive. Okay, I thought about that too. Because she does leak something. She has some sort of connection. And she does leak things. But, but not even in a fun way, right? It's not even creative. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I forgot about that. She does have at least one insider where she does leak some sort of information occasionally. So I don't know. Anyway, 
Wow, you beautiful fuckers, you. It's been an amazing live stream. We're going to do another one this Sunday. Um, uh, I've had such an amazing time interacting with you guys. She said George Clooney would be, become the new Batman. She's crazy. Girls on some cold cough medicine or anyway. Uh, but you guys have a wonderful night. Um, Spoiler Kings, I cannot wait to check out your review of John Wick Chapter 4. Everyone watching this. Definitely support each other. So if you've not subscribed to the channels in the chat, do so right now. All right? Do it. Bar none. Some of the best content creators out there. I love all of you. Watch each other's videos. Support each other. You know, and just support people you like on the internet. All right? You guys also have, you know, you're the heartbeat of this geek nation. I always have my finger on that geek pulse. You guys know that. I'll see you in the next video. And each and every one of you have a wonderful night. Later, y'all.